right when you start to like get tired and then you get that taste of what the song's gonna sound like it's just it's, it's like a really strenuous process how much work it really takes to like get a track just right watch people do multiple takes and then get like the right one and like just sitting there and like hearing it and being like, yeah that's the one Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. How are you doing? Good, right? If you want to, to um, sure. you can um, just play guitar on it. Before they put the... Look at this Taylor electric. I've never seen an electric. I've never seen a Taylor electric. So remind me again who does what. Mm -hmm. uh, so the way, so our band that we like play with all the time is Nick on bass. Josh on drums, Connolly playing lead electric, Eli playing rhythm electric, and well, they kind of, you know, Tra Eli's kind of grown into a little bit of uh, you doing lead stuff too, and they're both, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of both play electric and do add, the electrics. Yeah, so. add a little bit more. It's a lot of show. Um, and then Hunter and Kenley, we met. Um, I met Hunter when I started college, my first semester of college, we had a class together. But we didn't even know that we did music. I didn't know he did music. He didn't know I did music until, I don't know, a while ago. But yeah. Hunter was the first person I've ever songwritten with. So we sat down and started writing together. Um, and we wrote this song called Driving Around, which you've heard now, I think. And, um, and we're all really excited about that one. And so we decided we would bring Hunter and Kenley um, with us to record that one. So on that song... Hunter and I are going to kind of switch off vocally. Okay, cool. Um, and Kenley's going to play acoustic, I believe. I have no idea. We, I recorded those work tapes and sent them to you without listening to them. Um, <laughs> the, work tape that, the work tape that we did in the living room doesn't have the drums. Um, and so it's kind of... I feel like it's a little bit harder to tell where like all the like builds and stuff are. We're recording two songs, one called Driving Around, and one is called Something to Do With You, and um, wrote both those in the past year. Driving Around, I wrote with my friend Hunter Holland, and, uh, and my other friend Kenley Griffith, and really enjoyed both of these songs, and really kind of, two of them that kind of stuck with me, and I thought, you know, um, why not bring the boys down to Nashville for a trip and record a little bit, so I'm excited to record them. And, Get them rolling, get some edits back, get them all mixed up and mastered, and then send them out to the world, I guess. Light shining through the pines, and I know I'm steady on my way. We got no reason for the radio, and I'd rather feel the wind and hear the bullfrogs sing. Got a buddy out towards Monroe, said he caught some hogs to trade for moonshine today. There's a party up ahead, an angel to my right, I took my hand and brushed your cheek, when I caught her I told her you and I will dance this night away, we will dance this night away, as occasions on the back boys play, it's how to go, go, we will dance this night, we will dance this night away. She'd start to move underneath that moon of light. You know she felt alive, and so when I knew that brown eyed girl was a mine, the way she held me tight and told me, You and I will dance this night away. We will dance this night away as the cajuns on. Go, go, we will dance this night. 
our souls on life, so we walk down to the dark beneath the stars. Recording with Matt is absolutely incredible. Um, Matt is so humble. If you've ever met him, you've never heard him talk about, you know, anything about himself unless you ask. I really had to, you know, ask a ton of questions. I knew he was in this band that I listened to when I was a kid uh, called Jars of Clay. And it wasn't until my second time in the studio that I moved a pile of junk off of a desk and found Grammys. And I was like, what? Matt, what are you hiding from me? He's like, I'm not hiding anything. I just kind of, you know, I just don't bring it up. Yeah, so Matt, um, we were kind of just like figuring out what um, the whole process is or, or what steps to take to kind of better ourselves and kind of set ourselves up to uh, become maybe maybe musicians as a career path. Um, really gave us some good input on, on kind of what, what we need to have with our goals in mind and, and kind of how to achieve them. And we got to jam with him, which was also really cool. So far since Hunter's been in the booth, we've, he's developed two nicknames, which one is Baby Angel Hunter, because uh, he has the voice of a baby angel, and the other is Cheat Code Hunter, because it's like he's auto-tuned. He sings so perfectly. So it, took, it definitely took longer than I thought, but you play this song like a lot of times, just to get like the best, like the best track you can, pretty much. It's a long process, but it's still really fun, because this is like, Badass, you know what I mean? I don't really like music anymore, honestly. It's it takes too long to make. It's fun. It's fun being a part of this, and then like we'll hear this later on, and it'll be like full. You know what I mean? It's kind of cool to like yeah. like hear the different parts and then perfect them and then hear them come together. It's a beautiful thing. But, but then also, you feel that first as well. Sure. Yeah, I think I'll, uh, it's really, it's really fun to play with um, all your best friends, and so I mean, I could say the same thing about all of them, but it's just like such a good time. Um, like especially when Connelly was putting down solos, and we were all kind of in the room listening and like giving input, and then when he really like nailed them, it was really fun to kind of hype them up um, and like cheer each other on and stuff. There's no way. Oh, oh no, here's, oh, it's just the stand. <laughs> oh, the stand is this too. This is a 1958, it's 10 grand. Yeah, you're, you're gonna get played. I love, I love, okay. The neck when it has, wait, you're not really supposed to touch anything. Oh, really? assistance in this room. $7,000. So like, the more beat up they look, the more they smell like cigarettes and the better they are. <laughs> so you have to smell them. If they don't smell weird, then they're not good guitars. Exhibit, exhibit A. He smells funny. Wait, this, this one. This, Look how old he is. He smells really weird. And that means that he plays really well. How do I go about writing a song? I think it's one of those things that whenever I choose to go about writing a song, it's a lot harder to write a good song. You know, like you can't really force a song. I had to jump out of the shower sopping wet to, to write down a lyric that I, that I thought of. I just couldn't, I do not want to forget about it. A lot of times when I'm driving by myself, that's a big one. Um, you know, driving by myself is when a lot of, a lot of stuff comes to me. I've lived like in a lot of places, you know, kind of moved around a little bit when I was a kid, but there was like one place that was really constant in my life, and it was a farm uh, in the north part of Georgia in Royston. Um, and it's just always been known to me and my family as the farm. And it's where, 
I just kind of like learned everything that I know about, you know, being a man and following Jesus and just a lot of stuff like that. And um, it's it's still like a super special to me because it's kind of a place where me and my dad would go just like to get away and um, be together and, and hunt together. And it's, you know, with my little brother, um, we can still go down there. And it was the, it's just a place where I've grown more than any place. And it's been more of a, you know, home for me than most places have. So it's just a really, really special place to me. And so I wrote this song about the farm and um, recorded it last time I was here. So. So What's it called? The farm. <laughs> 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 yeah, not too, not too. Yeah. 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 I talked about this with um with Teddy, and he was like, "Do you have like a catchphrase or something that defines your music and like what you want your career to be about?" And I was like, "Yeah, actually." It's what I named my last EP. It's a line in one of my songs. And it basically just says, faith, family, friends is all that really matters. Like those are just the three like Fs. Faith, family, friends. That's that's it. Two, three, four. That are well worth staying for But I ain't gonna settle, no, not yet Cause the devil's knocking at my door You can tell my girl I love her You can tell her how I try to Stay behind me. these roads they wind And they call me all the time And this wandering heart ain't changing But that's alright Here. This is our friend Gavin, the Gavin. Tauntaun from Star Wars. Yeah, Gavin is a Tauntaun, native native species to a Hoth. Um, uh, you may have seen him in the, the film uh, Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. Um, uh, Luke rode one off into the wilderness uh, where he was attacked by uh, Wampa. Um, uh, and then his Tauntaun was killed in that interaction and then uh, when Han Solo came to rescue him, uh, Han Solo had to cut open his own Tauntaun to uh, put Luke inside it to keep him warm, to uh, protect him from the extremely cold climate of Fahath. Um, so Tauntauns are, you know, noble, brave species, and also, you know, uh, were, you know, a, a crucial piece of, you know, the rebels' plan to overthrow the Empire. At the end of the day, without the Tauntaun, you know, there would be no Luke Skywalker, and uh, no Luke Skywalker means, you know, uh, no defeating the Emperor, and, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, rescuing Vader back to the to light side, uh, you know, which, I mean, obviously, you know, brings back balance to the Force, so, I mean, extremely crucial creature, um, 
very humble, plays a background role, but like I was excited. ultimately very important. And so that's why we have to, you know, pay tribute to G Gavin here in the studio. 